So today we'll be talking about ICS3, which is the connection layer of the IBC core stack. The primary purpose of this layer is to actually establish a connection between the two chains. So what you've looked at so far at the ICS2 level is just about creating a way of actually tracking information about some counterparty chain, but you haven't actually made like a pairwise connection. You just have like one arrow pointing one way. And today is about making both the arrows point at each other and make sure that we're secure about that, that we understand who we're talking to and that there isn't a malicious entity who can uh, come in and pretend to be that other chain and forge incorrect information. Um, it also allows us to actually establish these connections with on-chain ledger code without having to rely on off-chain processes. So for today's call, I was planning on kind of just starting off with a very non-technical illustration of connections. I think the main portion of connections is the four-way handshake to establish the connection. And then everything else is kind of just auxiliary information in the specification. So I'd like to just start by illustrating that handshake um, in a very lighthearted way. And then we'll start to look into the code. And I'm kind of imagining this meeting will get like progressively more technical and into more detail. So hopefully it covers um, connections for various levels of interest. And if you have any questions along the way, please interrupt me and ask. I'm sure if someone doesn't understand something, someone else is probably thinking the exact same thing because it probably means I just forgot to touch on a very important point. Cool. Any questions before we just dive into connection handshakes? Sweet. So I made this uh, diagram and we're just gonna walk through all of the steps in various scenarios. And hopefully that should give you an idea. But the basic idea is that we're establishing a connection between two blockchains. And just for myself, I think imagining this as like establishing a connection between two people works just as well. And you'll commonly hear terms such as like crossing hellos. So I think it just makes for a nice illustration. So here we have uh, two folks. Um, we can clearly see on the left, this person is Fampe. And we'll find out who this person is in a second. But the open init is the first handshake we go into. And that's just initializing any sort of connection that may occur. But we haven't gotten agreement on both sides. So the first step is someone just announcing themselves by saying hello and then saying their name. So in this case, here we have Swampe and they're just announcing themselves. Then we move to the next step, which is a bit of a response from the person being spoken to. So here they also announce themselves and they say that I am Blumor. And they respond back to some of the information about Swampe. So here we can see that uh, Bloomer thinks uh, Svampa has a nice mushroom, which indeed uh, Svampa does. And we know it must be Svampa because the photo that Bloomer is holding right here looks exactly like Svampa. We have the top hat, we have the mushroom. So it's, a, it's like gotta be an identical match. And the, the other interesting part is that Svampa is also holding a photo that looks just like Bloomer. We have the little flower there in the hand and we have the hat. So that's some pretty strong like um, information about this connection is like, not only did someone come and say their name and say hello, but they also happen to be holding the correct photo of the person they were looking for. And they matched the photo that Bloomore was looking for. So that's like double verification there. It's not only verifying um, the person they're looking for, but it's also verifying that the other person is looking for them. And that's the open try step. Then in the open act, a very similar situation occurs, but now it's Svampe's turn to verify Blumor. And we see that Svampe can verify that it is Blumor by looking at the uh, photo they have. And we can see that they also have a great photo of them. So here we have the photo of Blumor, looks like Blumor, and we have the photo of Svampe, and it looks like Svampe, and that's what Blumor is holding. And open confirm is just kind of a final response of acknowledging the fact that uh, Svampe here was able to also identify Blumor both 
self-identify and identify. Cool. So that's like the very happy case of a connection where we have this hello, we have the response with some verification, we have another response with some verification, and then we just have the establishment that both sides are open. Now we run into an interesting case with this is what happens if both folks do the same steps simultaneously? And this is an important property of the four-way handshakes within IBC is that we must be able to progress even if they both occur at the same time. So here we have both Svampe and Blumor saying hello at the same time, but then they also do the same verification and open try. And because we wanna be able to progress to the next level, if they both wanna do open act at the same time, they have to do that verification again. So here they do that confirmation of, I've basically, it's really nice to meet you that you were looking for me and I was looking for you and that I know that we uh, found each other correctly, but we also check the photos again, just to be doubly sure, since we are doing this open act step. But because now both of these folks have verified each other twice, we don't actually need to do the confirm step. So the handshake would actually end here with both sides having an open connection. Cool. So those are uh, some good cases, but what happens if we run into someone who actually is a bit of an imposter? And so here we have uh, someone, I don't know who, coming and saying that they're Svampe, but they don't look like Svampe at all if we check the photo. So then the response is going to be, I'm sorry, but you don't look like Svampe. And how, uh, would, um, how would Bloomer already know what Svampe looks like? That is a great question. And that comes from the O2 client level. So okay. these little photos right here are illustrating the idea of having a light client algorithm along with some consensus state information, basically the last snapshot of what they look like. So that gives us the ability to actually verify who they are because we have a pretty good idea of who they are. We know how to verify that their identity is correct. Maybe like how you would verify an ID card, but you also know um, exactly what they look like with the consensus states, which includes the uh, root hash of the latest height and the next validator set. So that's some pretty strong verification we can do. And so in this case, because we can verify it, this imposter is kind of like someone coming and saying like, hey, I'm the Cosmos hub. And you look at their information and the validator sets like completely wrong and the root hash is like completely wrong. So it was clearly either someone trying to attack the system or maybe a relayer inputted the wrong information. So there at this step, at the open try, this is when that connection would actually be rejected. The open in it would still succeed because the open in it is just saying a, like a hello and announcing yourself. Was there a question? Yeah, so, so there's no notion of, um, of uh, being able to identify yourself as a particular chain, right? You just send uh, um, the consensus state uh, of your chain. And then uh, in this case, uh, Blomore um, will not be able to verify that the light client um, consensus state that it has uh, can be verified with the consensus state that the swamp is sent, right? Like yes, that. exactly. So there is an a idea of what a chain is, but it's like very indirect because it's nothing concrete like a chain ID. It's like the combination of the next validator set, the uh, consensus route at a specific height within a specific moment of time, um, even within like a certain trusting period and certain parameters like that. So there is a notion, but it's very like complex notion that you must derive from a set of things, as opposed to just saying that you are the Cosmos Hub. You kind of need to be able to, you, you can't just go around saying who you are, you need to be able to prove it as well. Cool. And I hope, I hope uh, using very high level diagrams is not uh, blowing over the stuff, but we'll get into the code and then I think that'll help clear up some of the abstractions. So now I just wanna look at the exact states when we walk through this handshake of how this might look in the code. So on the open init state, 
the only state change for this connection is the person who actually does the open in it. So because Fampe announces themselves, they get the in it, whereas Blumor will stay as um, uninitialized. They're, the connection hasn't actually been approached on their side yet. But when we do the open try, whoever does the open try will go from either uninitialized to try, or in the crossing hellos case, they would go from initialized to try. And of course, Fampe would stay the same because no interaction has happened on that side. In the open ACK, whoever we call open ACK on will move to open. And an important thing to know about open ACK is that you must, the counterparty must be in try for you to go uh, to open on the ACK state. You can't have uh, in it here that'll fail. You can't have open here that'll fail. It needs to be try. And then on the open confirm, both will end up being open because you're moving the try to open. And uh, with confirm, you also need the counterparty to be open. They can't be on try. Cool. So that's just the states changes that will occur. And then the last bit of information that I would like to get into before we look at the code is version negotiation, because that is the other important piece of the connection handshakes. So far, we've just looked at how to establish a connection, verify the other entity, and that they're uh, correctly, they're connecting to the correct chain. And the last part, which we haven't looked at, is agreeing on some sort of version on what we're going to talk about. Um, so in this case, when I use version negotiation, I use choosing the language that we're going to speak as the example, which in a way is what IBC Core does, is it chooses um, what protocol version we're actually going to talk, and then what sort of things within that protocol version we can actually talk about. And anything that is not agreed upon there shouldn't be addressed because it should be expected to just error out. So here, when Svampe and Blumor do the version negotiation, in the simple case, Svampe says, can you speak English? And Blumor says, yes, I can. And then after Blumor responds, then Svampe says, ah, English it is. And there's, there's the agreement. So the initial state is whoever does the open it proposes a version that we can possibly use. And it should be something that they support. So if a relayer tries to propose a version that's unsupported by Svampe, that should return an error. If the relayer decides not to provide a version, Svampe should provide whatever default version um, that Svampe wants to speak. Bloomore is responsible for taking the proposed version and seeing if it's possible to be supported. Otherwise, potentially proposing um, some sort of other modified version of this. So maybe there's a specific portion of English that can be spoken. But in this case, Bloomore could support English fully. And then here, Svampe has no choice but to accept. The only choice Svampe has here is either to end the conversation of saying, oh, the what you decided on, I can't actually do, or Svampe can agree to what's already been decided. But Svampe cannot change the um, version here because other since uh, Bloomore has no way to change it again. The decision happens on the try step. And then the ACK is just confirming what is decided there. Cool. So now let's look at an interesting case where we have selection with the version negotiation, where we have some proposal, but then we have some sort of selection after. So here, Svampe says, can du svenska? I can also speak English. And here we see a response of Blumar, I'm sorry, I can only speak English. And so Svampe says, English it is. So here we had Swedish and English as the proposed languages, but Blumar says, sorry, I only do English. And so Svampe goes with that, since that is supported on both sides. And now they've had a little bit of a negotiation and agreed to speak English for the rest of the handshake and any further communication. And now we have impossible communication, where Svampe says, can du svenska? And Blumer says, I'm sorry, I don't speak that language. And this might happen if maybe there's an IBC 
protocol version two, which completely changes how the uh, connection handshake does its proofs, like the proof paths or what it's actually proving. And so when Svampe tries to propose using this version two, and here we have Bloomore using version one, it just breaks down and it errors out. And we find that we can't actually continue this connection handshake because we haven't actually implemented it yet or we don't support it. Cool. So that is all the diagrams I have. I hope that was a decent introduction. Are there any questions before we just dive into the code? In the case where the, the, the negotiation uh, fails, um, in the open init, um, in the open init, will uh, Swampe be in, a, in the init state? Um, that is correct. So it's possible here that um, it, it's possible this will just stay in init until Bloomore can actually speak that language, that protocol version. Okay. Or it will just remain in init and there will never be an established connection on the other side. So does that connection end like hang around in state then like indefinitely? Yes, it does. And is, is that causing any problems in the future uh, to establish a connection connection again or? No, because you can just make a new connection. Mm -hmm. okay. So you could create, uh, Svampe and Bloomore could do the same iteration of handshakes as many times as they want. It's mm -hmm. it, ideally you only do it once because otherwise you have duplicate connections, but it's possible to do it as many times as you want since establishing a connection is permissionless. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love Those the drawings. Um, Thank you. I was just uh, thinking, so this in this analogy, the concept of the photograph is coming from what we said was the, you know, the light client. So is that just based off like the client ID or? Yes, I'll actually show you in the code, and I think that abstraction will make a lot more sense. Mm -hmm.